Hello, I'm Ikling and I'm from the Natural Sciences and Science Education Academic Group at the National Institute of Education, Singapore. A thoughtful understanding of the similarities and differences between science and school science will enable science teachers to teach science in a more meaningful manner, emphasize education researchers and policy makers to have a more realistic expectation of what is possible in science classrooms. Let us begin by considering what science is. Science is a systematic study of the world around us. We seek to understand the environment around us to develop ways of systematic and logical thinking, and also to develop means to improve the quality of our lives. Traditionally, science is such a specialized discipline of study that it is accessible only to trained individuals, the scientist. Today, however, the accessibility of science and technology has changed. The knowledge and products of science and technology has infiltrated every aspect of our lives. Take, for example, our mobile phones. They have become an extension of ourselves. Some of us use it to stall our photos of our loved ones, to stall phone numbers of our friends and our family. We have become inseparable from the mobile phone. The mobile phone technology is one of the products of science and technology. The brilliant global positioning system is yet another example we are so reliant upon to take us from one point to the other. These are all examples of how knowledge and advances in science has seeped into our lives to such an extent that we cannot remember what life was before they came along and we cannot imagine what life is without them. With so much science around us, we need to ensure we become informed and critical consumers of output of scientific investigations and discovery. When we encounter a piece of scientific information or come across a piece of equipment that is a product of science, we ought to be able to ask the following questions. How do scientists know what they know? Why should I believe scientific knowledge to be true? What are the evidences? How are these evidences obtained? To develop a better understanding to all these questions, we need to look into the epistemology of science. Basically, how scientists know what they know. Let us take a look at some ways in which scientists work. Firstly, scientists work as a community. Scientific knowledge needs to be debated, negotiated, and critique before it is acceptable by the community. Science as a discipline rely heavily on experimentation and empirical data. Therefore, scientists critique uh, each other's design of uh, experiments, critique the data that is presented, how the data is analyzed and interpreted based on dominant theories at that point in time. Secondly, scientists typically engage in systematic examination of a phenomena over a prolonged period of time. The gestation period of scientific discoveries or invention is not measured in minutes, hours, weeks, or even months. It is typically measured in years. Take the discovery of the structure of the DNA as an example. Watson and Crick would not have been able to present the world with the structure of the double helix in 1953 had it not been for the work of earlier scientists who isolated the DNA from 1860 and for generations of scientists afterwards who worked tirelessly on building this knowledge base. So technically, our knowledge of the double helix took about 93 years to come about. That's a pretty long time considering the fact that it could be longer than the lifetime for some people. So let us now consider if it is possible for students to learn to do science the way scientists do science. Well, to begin, let's talk about the goals of school science. The goals of school science is to create opportunities for students to rediscover the science that has already been discovered. This is usually done in a more sanitized manner as compared with what scientists actually experience. Take, for example, 
When students learn about the pH dependency of enzyme action, they typically carry out an experiment that will yield results within the hour of the laboratory session. This is because the condition for the reaction has been optimized for the students by the teacher. Scientists would probably take weeks and many experiments to make, merely figure out the optimal conditions for the reaction to take place. In school, what is presented to students usually does not include the noise and distractors. This is fundamentally the difference between the experience of scientists and science students. Students in school learn from a prescribed set of science learning outcomes. This is to enable them to pursue science as a field of study at higher grade levels. Scientists, on the other hand, learn on their job without a prescribed set of learning outcomes. Their learning is typically shaped by the requirements of their research. So, do school science present opportunities for students to negotiate, debate, and critique each other's ideas, just like what scientists do? Well, students are often presented with opportunities to present their ideas, claims, and conclusions in class so that their peers can help them improve upon their ideas. This resembles what scientists do to a certain extent. Anna McPherson, in a recent article, that examined the differences between the types of claims practicing ecologists work on and that of school tasks, noted some differences in emphasis. While ecologists work on questions related to causal relationships, there are few of such tasks in schools. In a study carried out with primary four students in Singapore, my team and I um, asked the students to do a draw a scientist task and upon analysis of their drawings, we found out that there are some similarities and differences in students' ideas about science based on their science learning experiences in school. Now, this idea of scientists working alone as opposed to working in teams is one that is um, resilient and which puzzles us. Simply because students work, do work in groups in school, but yet they think that scientists work alone. Now, we hypothesize that this idea of scientists working alone comes from the exposure to cartoons and popular media of this idea of a mad scientist doing mad experiments in the laboratory alone. Students see similarities between what they do in school and what scientists do, in the sense that students conduct experiments in their classrooms and scientists also conduct experiments. Students get to work with data, in terms of uh, working, working out the averages as well as doing some multiplication and mathematical manipulations. And that's what scientists do as well. Now to conclude, let me go back to the three questions we started with. What is science? What is school science? And what is the relationship between the two? We have established that science and school science have different goals and hence it is difficult to replicate the way scientists work in school, given the constraints of school. As such, policymakers and curriculum developers need to take into account the goals of science education and the context of school when they are developing, designing, and evaluating science curriculum.